When you point out that no American knowingly colluded with these Russian actors, that there has to be a collective sigh of relief within the Trump White House. Yes, but I think that needs to be a limited sigh of relief because remember what else we know from this investigation. Uh, one is that uh, Donald Trump Jr., Paul Manafort, Jared Kushner all knowingly met with uh, representatives of the Russian government who were offering dirt on Hillary Clinton. So uh, while in this indictment they do not allege that uh, the Americans who uh, were lured in by the Russians knew they were being lured in, there are other facts that we are uh, have learned in the investigation so far. And we have a pending plea deal with Rick Gates, who was the deputy campaign manager under Paul Manafort. Uh, we don't know what he's telling and what Paul Manafort's telling. So uh, I, I think this is uh, uh, a short-term uh, relief for the Trump administration, but there's a lot more yet to go. The one other thing I would say that is uh, not a source of relief for the Trump administration is part of the argument uh, has been, as people have considered whether or not the president could be charged with obstruction of justice, is what's the underlying crime? Is there an underlying crime? You can obstruct justice without one, but it makes it a weaker case. With this indictment of these Russians, we see that Bob Mueller is alleging a very large underlying crime. And then the question is, uh, as he continues to gather information, continues to get statements from witnesses, does he uh, provide any link, uh, uh, knowing link, between the Trump campaign and that effort? If he does, then that's a very serious blow to the Trump White House. But it hadn't happened yet, but we're going to have to stay tuned. Back in real quick, uh, we're learning yeah. more information from NBC News' Kristen Welker about exactly how the president discovered this information today or learned about this information today from a White House official uh, telling NBC News that the president was briefed this morning personally uh, by Rod Rosenstein uh, at the Department of Justice and Christopher Wray, uh, the director of the FBI. So that happened here at the White House this morning. Uh, it's clear this White House official saying that from the way they handled it, the president's being treated as part of the process and not part of the problem. So this goes to the point that we were just talking about uh, that uh, for today this information that's coming out from the special counsel's office uh, is an indication that there was no uh, evidence that the special counsel's office has right now that it's prepared to reveal publicly that anybody from the Trump campaign participated in any of this but to John's point uh, this is probably the beginning rather than the end of this process and we're going to see a lot more about what the special counsel knows about what exactly happened in 2016 and there could True, be a lot more to but, come but just looking at the market reaction though Eamon I, I would say that Rosenstein, if I heard him right, correctly said that that this action by Russia or this these group of individuals began in 2014. That That's would correct. have been a year before Donald Trump even entered the race for president. Right. The other, the other point here that Rosenstein made that's important to bear in mind is that the Russians were, no. uh, this was not just a pro-Trump effort. There was also an effort to just sow discord in general, right? Destabilize the United States political system in any way they can. He pointed to an anecdote in which the Russians actually uh, organized simultaneous rallies inside the United States in the same city on the same day, both for and against the president, right? So uh, they were working both sides of the aisle here in that sense. Uh, but uh, what we know from the reporting broadly is that the overall Russian goal here in 2016 uh, was to do what they could, whatever they could, uh, to put their thumb on the scale on, on behalf of Donald Trump during that campaign. And Brian, if I could just add to what Eamon just said, yes, there were rallies for and against uh, the president-elect Donald Trump, but that was after he'd been elected. Before he, he was elected, we see in this indictment uh, uh, consistent attempts, as Eamon said, to put the thumb on the scale for Donald Trump by giving derogatory information about Hillary Clinton, by uh, helping Jill Stein, who, by the way, was at that dinner in 2015 with Michael Flynn and Vladimir Putin. Uh, and in addition to that, negative information about Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio, who were the two top opponents of Donald Trump in the 2016 so John, Republican primaries. That, then, with me or Eamon, if you want to, at the very top, Rosenstein said that their efforts were to spread distrust toward the candidates, both of them. They didn't couch it as being towards one or the other. It was about both candidates. If you read the to... indictment, okay. uh, Michelle, you, you will see uh, attempts to... That it's more to... heavily weighted toward being yes. against Hillary Clinton yes. and pro-Donald Trump. Yes. Well, it wouldn't have been a, it would have been against Clinton in 2014, but it couldn't have been pro-Trump because Trump was not in the race for another year.
Right. Sure. What the That's reporting right. is on this is that the, the effort by the Russians morphed over time. And initially, uh, it was a deep destabilization, anti-Clinton effort. Uh, and then over time, as the Russians uh, became more and more confident that Donald Trump uh, had a chance in this election, and as the uh, Republican primary process went on, uh, they gradually began to change their effort into one that would help the Trump campaign. And so you see here the allegation that uh, people affiliated with this Russian effort met personally in the United States with people of affiliated with the Trump campaign. So that uh, that's not an allegation that we see uh, happening with the Hillary Clinton campaign, for example. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.